the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today, we have a couple of themes within the region that especially they affect us. First of all, for the first reading, you saw Abraham's hospitality. He was looking up to God, and all of a sudden appeared three men, which he poured out his hospitality to, allowed them to come forward, washed their feet, gave them something to eat and drink, and, and in the Wisconsin ways, gave them milk and curds. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> that I was pretty impressed with them. That stood out to me. Curds, yes. Jesus. And in that, hospitality is very important for us as a community because when we see the stranger, when someone comes to worship with us, that hospitality is important to treat them with love and respect, to roll out the red carpet, to do the things that we need to do for them, to make our community appeasing and appealing to them, especially in what we do and how we worship. And then the other theme is the suffering of the body of Christ, which is us all. We are the body of Christ here on earth. And he talks about a deficiency in Christ suffering. It's not in the person of Jesus Christ. It's in his body, the church. And how do we deal with the suffering of our everyday world? Our pains, our aches, our struggles, our anxieties, our fear. I talk about these things a lot. And ultimately, it's about adhering to the cross. It's about holding on to Christ and the cross. During the daily masses, I've been talking about the divine will and adherence to the divinity of Christ on the cross, who created all things, who created even the DNA that runs through us, the systems of the world, our body, how it heals itself when we cut ourselves, the amazement of science, the, the technology, all of these are gifts from God given to us. And that present, that divine person present on the cross, what was he thinking of? He was looking into time and space. He was seeing our actions. And when we adhere to that, we give him glory. When we offer our pain, our struggles up to him, we give him glory. We pray for the conversion of sinners. We can pray, pray for the conversion of our family. God hears that when we adhere ourselves to the cross, when we unite our suffering with him. Paul speaks about that today. And then in kind, Jesus talks about the fear and the anxiety of Martha. It reminded me of the Brady Bunch, you know, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Jesus <laughs> is going, coming back and going, Martha, Martha, you have a lot of anxiety. And don't we all in this culture right now, we see everything changing in front of us. We have a lot of fear and anxiety. We don't agree with what's being done in our country and in the world. And sometimes there's an anger that comes out of us. And I think we're a lot like Martha right now. And we got to realize that we're not in control. God is in control. He's got perfect control of this. And when we are not faithful to him, he kind of goes hands off a little bit. And he says, okay, you reap what you sow, right? If you don't want to be faithful, if the culture doesn't want to be faithful, I'll take my hands off and we can see how worse and worse it gets. So what do we do as a people? What do we do as Christ's body? We double down back into our faith. We be like Mary. And we sit at the feet of Jesus and we adore him. We love him. We praise him. And this is how we come back to God and how we get our world back to God and save that world. How God's going to save our world is through our prayer. It's an old prophecy of the church that the church will be saved by the lady, by their prayers, by their sacrifice, by their knowledge of the Lord and their love for the Lord that will save the church. Because remember, you are the body of Christ. Every one of us is part of Christ's body. He died for each and every one of us. And in that, when we adhere to his suffering, when we offer those things up for him, and when we 
double down in prayer, what happens is good things. Our culture kind of starts to self-correct. And we see that in our culture. We see that with the overturning of Roe versus Wade, for example. I mean, that's a cultural correction after 50 years. So a couple things, just thoughts in ending this homily. We often look for patience. I hear a lot in the confessional people talk about, Father, I don't have the patience for this culture. And it's across the board. Never pray for patience. Please don't pray for patience. You know why? Because God will give you more opportunities to be patient. Pray for peace. Because prayer turns into peace. The more we pray, the more we'll be peaceful in our heart. Okay? And then the byproduct of peace is patience. So never pray for patience because that's the end game. That's the virtue of patience. That's what we get when we have peace in our heart. When we pray and put the time in with the Lord. When we sit at His feet adore him and love him. He gives us peace in our heart. It could be chaos in the world, but we have peace in our heart. And then the patience through others, you know, others around us, and we can be very impatient with others, especially those that drive in front of us. I wish they would just pull over and let me go by, right? But the thing is, is that's where that peace comes in. Then we start to pray for the other. And then the patience resides in the other thing is, how do we get to that point? How do we ask God to endeavor into our prayer life, invest into our prayer life? We ask, have to ask for those disciplines. We have to ask for the prayer, discipline of prayer. Lord, teach me how to pray. Lord, help me, give me the discipline. Let me pray in the moment of temptation. Let me pray when I'm angry. Let me pray when my emotions start to flip. The flare. When we ask for those things, when we ask specifically from God for those things, do you think God's going to say, oh no, that's too big of an act? God doesn't do that. He sees that light in us and he goes, absolutely, I want to give that grace, that discipline to my people. So don't be afraid to ask for those disciplines of prayer, of virtue, of love, of charity, of peace. When we do that, we continue to pray and we let that fill our mind and our heart and our day, what happens is we start to get the virtues of charity, love, and faith. The other thing is when we look at our day, it can't be just the morning thing and before we go to bed. It's got to be an all the time. We have to have the Lord, like Mary, sitting at his feet. And how do we keep God right here in front of us. And it's that praise of God that I keep on talking about. It's keeping our mind afresh with the Spirit of God to carry Him with us in the world. And that takes practice. It's not easy because what happens is we get through our day and then we see something on Facebook and, and then we're like, oh, I'm so mad. I'm so angry. But at that anger, we should let that trigger our prayer. When our emotions flare, when we feel jealous, when we feel down, when we feel lonely, when our emotions are starting to flux, know that we are being tempted by the devil. He is around because he works through our emotions, mind, emotion, and then he wants us to sin. That's the mystical pathway where God inspires, lets us feel that love and inspiration, and then we move in love. That's the mystical pathway. Satan tries to plug it up like a toilet, right? So when we flush it, it overflows. And you got all the anger and all the stuff coming out right at your feet. So when you feel that intense emotion, right? If it's anger, if it's impatience, if it's fear, if it's anxiety, like Martha, it's time to move into Mary mode. And it's time to pray, to sit at the feet of Jesus. Even if it's just a second. And we praise him and we thank him for that moment. And in that, God will reward you. God will give you that peace that you desire, that love you desire, and that faith that we're all yearning for. Let us stand.